All right, kiddos, here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make what's called a two by three slanted Lego. Um, and that's the name I made up, so it may not actually be called that. Uh, but this is what it's gonna look like. And uh, what's unique about this is that this slant cut, when you make these cylinders underneath, they need to have a unique termination point. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but we're gonna make this guy. Uh, so we'll open up a new part file and just click on part it's going to open right up now the last one we designed it from the bottom base on this one because of the slant i think we're going to be better off designing it from the side uh, so we're going to go to sketch and we're going to go to line and we're going to design it on the front plane okay and if you choose a different plane from me that's totally fine doesn't matter i'm going to choose the view orientation and actually look right at that front view so that everything looks proportional as i design so i'm going to make a height and I'm going to make a base and I know it comes up a little bit and then it comes over here and it's got a little flat part on the top and it looks something like that. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and throw the dimensions on there to make sure it's actually accurate. Now, what I told you in the first video is the height of a standard Lego is three eighths of an inch. And just to review why that is the flat Legos like these guys are one eighth of an inch. And if you take three of those, and you put them together, it equals exactly a standard Lego. So these are each one eighth of an inch. This is three eighths of an inch. So for our dimension, we're going to go ahead and click and say three eighths. Enter. OK, for the top, the top part of this guy is a single Lego width. And like we talked about before, a single Lego width will always be 5 sixteenths of an inch. So it's going to look something like that. Now what you'll notice about the base of it, it's actually three Lego lengths. So if a standard was 5 sixteenths, then we know the base is going to be three times that. So you could type in 5 sixteenths times three, and it should do the math for you. Or if you want to do the math in your head, you can just type in 5 sixteenths. Sorry, 15 sixteenths. And that's going to give you your three Lego length. Now, over here, you might think, oh, well, flat pieces are one eighth of an inch tall, so this must be one eighth. But what you'll actually notice on these Legos is it's actually slightly less than one eighth of an inch tall on that slanted piece. So, just to show you how we go about dealing with that, one eighth is the same thing as four thirty seconds. So, if we want it slightly less than that, we're going to just call that edge three thirty seconds. And we'll hit OK, and it's going to look something like that. And that's, that's going to be really close to what it actually is. Okay, so that's the side profile for this Lego. Now we need to add that extrusion. And if you look, the Lego is two Legos wide. So when we go to Features and Extrude, we're going to make sure that we put in two Lego widths. So standard Lego width is 5 sixteenths. So this is going to be 10 sixteenths or 5 eighths, whichever you prefer. They're the same thing. And if you click, you can preview. And we'll say OK. And we now have something that's starting to look like our slanted Lego brick. It's got two knobs on top. So we're going to go to Sketch. And we're going to throw a sketch on this top face. Now remember, when you see this yellow box, it's really asking you a question. It's saying, what face do you want to put the sketch on? Whatever I click on next is going to become my sketch plane. So you've got to be careful. And we're going to go ahead and click on this top face right here. And I'm going to go up to View Orientation. And I'm going to say, I want to look right at that top view. And we're going to now go to circle. And I'm going to put a knob right there. And I know my knobs are always the same size. They're always 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we'll type that in. If a standard Lego width was 5 sixteenths and we want to center this guy, then the centering needs to be exactly half of that, which needs to be 5 30 seconds. And we need that same distance from the center point to this top edge of five, 30 seconds. Okay, that knob is now right where it needs to be. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude it. And if you remember, the extrusion on one of these knobs is not going to be 5 eighths. It's going to be 1 16th. And it's going to look something like that. Now, obviously, we need a second knob right here. We're not going to redesign a whole new knob. We're just going to pattern this. If we're lucky, sometimes it'll already populate with that knob. If we're not, we'll just click right here. This is where we get to select features. And I'm going to say I want that knob. And I'm going to go in one direction. I'm going to pick one of these lines that cuts across. And you can see it chose the right direction. If it didn't, I would just choose this arrow and it would switch the direction. 
I do want two occurrences, but I want my spacing to be a standard Lego width, which is 5 16 and it's going to look just like that. Okay, so we now have the whole top of our Lego brick. We just need to do the underneath part now. So we're going to use shell to hollow this out. We're going to click on this bottom face because that's where we want it hollowed from. And what we need to choose, we need to tell it how thick do we want the remain, remaining walls to be. And we want them to be 1 16th of an inch. And we'll say OK. And it's going to look like that. And you can see where the divots are, just like a Lego piece, uh, right underneath the knobs on top. Now, it may seem insignificant that it puts those divots in there, but if you think that they're producing 10 billion of each of these pieces or something like that, the amount of plastic they're saving and the weight when they're shipping it by having divots in there becomes very significant. Okay, this is the trickiest part of this, is that these cylinders need to have a custom termination point because of this slant. They can't extrude up any set amount. So we're now going to put a sketch, and the sketch has to be on this face. It can't be in here because it won't work the way we want it. It has to be on this face, and we're going to go ahead and look right at it, which this should be the bottom view. And I'm going to put two circles. I'm going to put a circle. Let's try that again. We're going to put a circle there, and another circle that's perfectly concentric with it. Okay, the inside circle is the easy one. We know that a knob needs to be able to fit right into that inside circle. And if that's the case, it's going to be 3 16 of an inch. That's going to be the exact dimension of the knobs on top. That way it squeezes in there and it's snug so it holds. And that's what we want our Lego bricks to do. Now that trickier one is where does this outer, what does this outer circle need to be? And we don't know exactly, but I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But first, we need to make sure that our center points are exactly one Lego width away from the side. And also, exactly one Lego width away from the top. And both of those are 5 16 of an inch. Okay? Now, here's where we're going to get a little tricky. We're going to throw a fake knob in this corner. We're not actually going to extrude it. We're just going to use this as a tool. And because it's a knob, it's going to have that 3 16 diameter. And we're going to make it tangent to this edge and tangent to this edge. And the way we do that is with what's called add relation. These are the constraints in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to tell this circle and this top edge to be tangent to one another. And you can now see the symbol just popped in there. So it is. And um, I think at this point, I can just right click and say clear. And we're going to go pick this circle again. And we're going to pick this edge. And we're going to go tell them to be tangent to one another. And you can see that circle just went exactly where I want. And it's the right size. And that's where a peg is going to fit in here. OK, that means we need this circle and this circle to be perfectly together. So I'm going to clear this out again. I'm going to say this outside circle and this outside circle. These are all the different constraints we can put between them. But really, the only one I want is this tangent. And you can see they just lock tangent to one another. So now, without even dimensioning this outside circle, we got it right where we want it. Okay. Now that we've got that, we're in a linear pattern. And it's choosing both of my circles, which I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out my entities. And instead, I'm just going to choose this outside circle and this inside circle. And it's going the wrong way, so I'm going to switch the direction. I do want two of them for my occurrences. Um, but my spacing is not correct. So I'm going to make it 5 16 and that's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to accept that. At this point, we have two sketches. They look like little donuts, and they're right where we want them. We need them to extrude up, but only to the point where they terminate into the next surface. So we're going to say Features, Extrude. For our selected contours, we're going to select this donut, and we're going to select this donut. They're wanting to come down now. That's not what I want. So I'm going to switch the direction. Now, when this is on blind, that means I'm going to give it a distance for the extrusion. And that's not what I want either. So I'm going to change that to up to next. And what you're going to see is they are then going to terminate as they hit the next surface, which gives them both custom termination points, which is exactly what we want. And we'll say yes. There's your piece. Now, if I really did need a red piece, I'm going to go here to Edit Appearance. 
and I'm going to go choose red. Now you may need a different color of this, so go ahead and choose whatever color you want it to be and make sure you save this. Now I said this in the first video, but I'll say it again. Make sure you've created a folder called ninth grade. Inside of it, engineering. Inside of it, Lego project. You're going to be making dozens of different parts and you need to make sure that you stay very organized with this. So you would call this one two by three slanted. Okay? Have fun.